I was investigating a shore area in preparation for an underwater photography contest. The currents were not too strong and the water was quite clear. I had an exposure meter and a watertight housing to check the light. The light readings looked good to me at all depths. The underwater landscape was fine for photography. It was beautiful and rugged. There seemed to be plenty of marine life, too. I swung around a rock on my way back to the surface. I was surprised to see another diver down here on the bottom. I watched him for a moment or two, trying to figure out what he was up to. All of a sudden, I realized he was in trouble. As I reached him, he grabbed for my mouthpiece, but I saw at once that his own emergency air supply had not been tapped. I pulled the emergency valve, and the air poured into his mouthpiece from his own tanks. As I started him toward the surface, I sized him up. Obviously, he was unfamiliar with his equipment, and he certainly had no business in the water alone, inexperienced as he must be. I couldn't know then that this encounter would one day put me in an even worse spot underwater without air, struggling for my life. My newfound friend had little to say when we reached the surface. He was weak and wobbly and out of breath. I thought for sure I was out of air. How long have you been diving? I'm just learning. Why didn't you pull your J-valve? What's that? The lever for your emergency air supply. This. What kind of an instructor did you have, anyway? He ought to be arrested. I'm his instructor, thank you. Mr. Cap, you had no business going off by yourself. He had no business being in the water at all. How long have you been an instructor? Long enough. Have you got an instructor certificate? No. Well, uh, in this county, it's against the law to teach without one. Well, I'm sure I can get one. Yeah, the tests aren't easy. How would you know? I helped give them. I didn't know what I was letting myself in for when I spoke my piece that time. A week later, I started a new class of applicants for instructor's licenses. As I called the roll for the first time to get acquainted with my new pupils, I hardly expected to find a familiar face. But there she was, Gracie Bond by name, and with a look in her eye that spelled trouble. I must say, she handled herself very well. She swam as if she'd been skin diving all her life. For a while, I thought I'd been wrong about her attitude.
Next came the underwater breath holding test. What was my time? Just about a minute. Oh, let me try it again. I can stay down much longer than that. No, that won't be necessary. You qualified. But barely, huh? You are just determined to keep me from demonstrating how wrong you are and how wrong you've been. You're the one who's wrong, Miss Bond. I'd like to see you get that certificate. Well, it certainly doesn't look that way. She has quite a temper, hasn't she? Yeah. All right. The real showdown came when the class went out to the ocean. First, we did routine procedures such as clearing masks and removal of the mouthpiece. Finally, I demonstrated to the class the technique of ditching a tank and recovering it. This is one of the most important tests of confidence and self-discipline for a diver. I had taught them how to rise slowly, letting out air, and to go back down after one breath. to our diving boat. I paired off the candidates for their ditching test. I gave them two final orders. Don't go below 25 feet, and under no circumstances, leave your buddy. Gracie and her partner were the first pair down. The bottom I had picked out was no more than the necessary 25 feet down. But close by, it dropped sharply to nearly 60 feet. And that was just what Gracie was looking for. Gracie's buddy prepared to ditch his equipment, while she prepared to ditch him. She was always trying to prove that she was better than anyone else. And a chance to come up from 60 feet instead of 25 looked to her like a good way to do it.
When Gracie's diving buddy came up alone and yelled out his story to me, I wasted no time getting into the water myself. Even as I swam toward her, I could tell that she wasn't in any trouble. In fact, she seemed to be doing everything exactly as it should be done. I offered her air for my tanks, but she signaled that she didn't want any. She was determined to make the surface in one breath, and she wasn't going to spoil it now. take instructions, certainly can't give them. You're not washing me out. Yes, for the protection of other people, as well as for yourself. Look, I've got to have that certificate. I've got a job waiting for me as instructor at the New Malaga Shores Hotel. It's the best job I ever had. Yeah, well, I'd rather you lose your job than lose your life. Oh, Mr. Nelson, you are a, a pompous, stuffy square. We'll row you back to shore, huh? No, thank you. I'll swim in. I thought that I'd seen the last of her. That was my mistake. A big mistake. Almost a fatal one. Gracie Bond was the last person on my mind as I rode down the street of a lazy Caribbean seaport a few months later. I was down here on business, searching for some extremely rare sea specimens. So far, I hadn't found what I was looking for. I stopped Cole to watch a giant sea turtle hightailing at full speed for the surface. Then I saw the reason for its haste. It was being pursued by a girl diver. She caught up to the turtle and hung on for the ride. There was something very familiar about this girl. She looked like Gracie Bond, and she acted like Gracie Bond. But I figured the island was big enough for both of us, if I kept my end of it. I couldn't keep to my end of the island. I needed an air compressor to pump my tanks, and the only one available was at the Hotel Carioca, where they advertised skin diving lessons and spearfishing trips. All in charge of Miss Gracie Bond. I hoped maybe that it was another Gracie Bond. It wasn't. Welcome, Mr. Nelson. I heard you were around asking for an air compressor. You're welcome to use ours anytime you'd like it. 
when I turn it on, will it explode? You know, I wouldn't have landed in this wonderful place if we hadn't had that, uh, shall I say, misunderstanding. You really helped me. You mean I'm no longer a pompous, stuffy square? No, you're not. I'm very willing to let bygones be bygones if you are, Mike. And I haven't drowned a single pupil yet. No narrow escapes? <laughs> and no narrow escapes. Huh? No. As a matter of fact, I'm truly glad you're here. I've got a favor to ask. Feed myself to the sharks, huh? <laughs> no. I've just located a very unusual cave a little beyond Pirate Bay. It looks like a wonderful place for practice dives. But I, I'm not sure about letting my pupils use it, whether it's really safe or not. Would you make a dive with me and look it over? Well, it's not the cave that I'm concerned about. It's you. But I've changed, Mike. Come with me. I'll show you how well-behaved I am. Hmm? It's amazing. <laughs> what? What a pretty girl can do to a guy. Draw my back. I really wanted to believe that Gracie had reformed. And on our way out to Pirate Bay aboard the Chestnut, she did her best to convince me. The fish weren't interested in our bait, but I was certainly taking hers. What she really wanted was to come back home, get her instructor's license, and settle down. Despite the glamorous job she now had, she was homesick. And she was working on me to win me over. She figured that I was the key to getting that license. When we finally anchored in Pirate's Bay, I went out to set up our diving raft. Gracie started implementing her plan. That was my air tank she was fooling with. She removed my regulator. Now she put the regulator on a set of tanks exactly like mine. Only thing, they were less than half full of air. Having exchanged the regulators, she switched the position of the tanks. I'd never know that I was going below without enough air to get back up. I could see that in one way, at least, Gracie hadn't changed. She wanted to be far out in front as she led the way down to the cave. But when we reached the cave, I decided that I had better go in first. It was an interesting cave, but it was narrow and twisting. Certainly no place for students. I hesitated because there were so many obstructions ahead. Then I went on alone to see whether it was safe. All of a sudden, I inhaled and got nowhere. I reached for my emergency valve.
It did no good. I looked to Gracie for help. Why was she standing there? She could see that I was in trouble. But Gracie had planned it this way, not to come to my rescue till I'd really appreciate it. This she hadn't planned, getting hung up herself. Nor this, tearing her air hose loose. Now we were both in trouble, bad trouble. She had air, but her breathing apparatus was wrecked. I had no air, but my breathing apparatus worked. There was nothing to do but try to switch mine to her tank, if we could both hold our breath till the job was done. Gracie, I remembered, couldn't hold her breath long. I worked feverishly. She held on. Gracie, the irresponsible, was at last behaving like a grown-up despite lungs that threatened to burst and a sensation of panic that could have made her swim blindly to destruction. Her every reaction was the right one. As we finally swam toward the surface, sharing our air, I felt that she had at last proven herself. The truth didn't come out till later. Hey, you all right? Huh? You know why you ran out of air down there, Mike? It wasn't a mechanical failure. It was a human failure. I let half the air out of your tank. What? Oh, it was a reckless, stupid thing to do. But I thought it would give me a chance to help you and, and to make you grateful. And instead, it only proved that all those things you once said about me are true. I had a ring your neck. I know. Oh, Mike, I've never been so scared. Well, good. Maybe that's what you needed. Maybe now you'll take responsibility the way it should be taken. Uh, some people only learn the hard way. They're lucky enough to live through it. Do you think you have learned anything this time? Oh, I have, Mike. I have. Well, basically, you have got what it takes. I mean, you came through all right down there when you had to. Does that mean you're going to give me another chance to try for that certificate? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, Mike, what can I ever do to repay you? Try my back. Hi there. I'm Lloyd Bridges. Skin diving is certainly a lot of fun, and it's full of adventure. See some more of it again next week, huh? when there'll be another excursion into that fabulous underwater world of sea hunting. <laughs>